Call this meeting to order at 9 a.m. Tuesday, November 12, 2024. We're here to discuss the wildfire risk mitigation program with Tyre and Bill. So, Bill, you want to start us off? Where are we at? Okay, what, what we're looking at mainly what this meeting is about is the CWGG grant. And we're going to work. We've talked about pursuing, we probably need to pursue it the way the funding's been going, and then uh, see where or what we can do with that. Um, entire, um, through with the, with the IDL, it has its some ideas that may help us out or and he just kind of wants to pitch what he what he thinks we could do and then it'd be up to you guys to decide which way you want to go now is this is this the grant that um <clears throat> was it five million or ten million <clears throat> the limit is uh, up to ten million um, some things I, I, from what I understand have changed since the last time I sat down and talked with anybody about it so since he's the state of Idaho uh, Louie guy the wildland urban interface he probably knows more about it than I do okay well, what can you tell us, Tyre? <clears throat> In conversations with Bill, uh, I understand that you all have been approached by the local district in an encouragement to pursue the community wildfire defense grants. Is that understanding correct? Yes. <clears throat> and in so doing, uh, you know, the opportunity to grow the program, particularly in the procurement of machines in order to support your program of delivery um, has been discussed at least as part of that as well as the expansion of work <clears throat> as we know um, meaning bill and i the amount of money that comes in for the implementation of this work is really pittance of pennies at the end of the day for the amount of demand that exists within the county and within the various project areas so Community Wildfire Defense Grants is this large sum of dollars that could be accessed uh, in order to really address the existing demand and develop um, a far more reaching impact within these drainages that people call home and these landscapes that uh, are found within Shoshone County that have homes and other infrastructure built on them, right? So the Community Wildfire Defense Grant uh, opportunities through what we've been talking about is uh, going to come full circle a little later uh, this morning uh, when we talk with uh, Jeff Lau and Ava Andrea about shared stewardship. But in part is our efforts through shared stewardship are to expand the pace and scale of the implementation of work. And to do so, we need a far larger funding source to do that. And the Community Wildfire Defense Grants affords us that really one-time shot-in-the-arm opportunity to do so. IDL is not um, what we are known as a host state, but we are a technical service provider, meaning we are not um, the pass-through entity for the funding, though we can still be an applicant. So if we deem, meaning our leadership deems particular projects to be of significant, significant value to IDL, then we will pursue an application on behalf of a cooperator for the implementation of said whatever that work is. And because shared stewardship, our priority landscape, again, you'll see more about this from Jeff a little later today, covers a large portion of Shoshone County, specifically along the interstate corridor. 
and all of the development that is contained therein. Uh, this is of significant interest to us because the fire load is increasing, it's not decreasing as we continue to march through time. And anything that we can do to abate the potential damages or reduce that risk to your communities in this county, we have a vested interest in as well as a primary fire protection resource within the county. So that is significant interest to us. There is a caveat to our interest in pursuing that though, is that we cannot pursue the purchase of equipment if we are the applicant on your behalf. However, rental of equipment is strongly encouraged through these programs. And the reality is, is that if you rent equipment, then you're not liable for all the maintenance associated with that equipment. And that'll give you a better idea whether or not you actually want to own that equipment is our position uh, on equipment. Um, there are a couple of companies that do rent equipment that we are familiar with that at the end of the life of that rental, oftentimes that rental company will provide that piece of equipment to the renter for purchase at a significantly reduced price of that uh, piece of equipment. So that is an opportunity, I think, that will present itself based upon the the interest of renting equipment or using equipment beyond the current contractor base that you're utilizing uh, to implement the work in the county, that may be something you all want to uh, potentially pursue. So in the interest of this project, we're looking at somewhere between five and a $10 million ask uh, if we were to be an applicant and then pass through that funding to the county for the implementation of work. That has, in my opinion, one significant advantage is that IDL then becomes the bank, whereas you all, if you're working directly with the Forest Service, then you all have to become the bank um, and make those um, investments and then wait on the reimbursements to come from the Forest Service, which is through the Albuquerque Processing Center, which is not known for expeditious uh, payments, unfortunately. Um, they're getting better, but still it's a delayed process, whereas with IDL, um, that window of payment return is anywhere from 30 to 45 days because of our new financial systems. It's a little longer than it historically has been, but nonetheless, it's still faster than what we have experienced with our Albuquerque partners. And then we also become a buffer in the event of a audit against the uh, the cooperator, meaning you all, as a pass-through entity of any findings or issues that may be um, identified as part of an audit, and then the state becomes liable for those findings. So what kind of questions can I answer for you? Because I've just given you a bunch of information <clears throat> on our interest. Well, um, you, know, you mind? Go ahead. Okay. One of the questions I have is, is, you know, we obviously we need this work done. How does working with IDL affect that? I mean, now, if they're going to give us $10 million to go out and do a project, or $5 million to go out and do a project, how much of that is would, would IDL require or out of that, out of those proceeds? You know, what, what is your cost? On say a ten million dollar award, probably in the realm of a hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and that's to cover admin and some of the indirect associated with payments that would be made um, to you all that we would be allowed to collect. Okay. Now on the equipment, uh, one of the one of our <clears throat> our problems is is we're a small county and we can't just go out and afford to buy those masticators to be able to do the work that we need done. I mean, right now we, I don't even think we have one that's working very well. We have one. One. And, you know, that's one of the things that we're really, we're really pushing for is to make sure that we can get some of that equipment so that we can continue to do the fire mitigation mm -hmm. afterwards, especially with our roads. I think that's one of the main reasons why uh, we 
we really need this. It's, you know, we need this for our roads. When you say that we could only rent it, for how long? For the life of the award. Which is, what, a year? Five years. Five years. So we could rent the equipment for five years. I just, I know the struggle we'd have at the end of the rent when it came to paying for the equipment. I, I don't know where we'd get the funds mm -hmm. to pay for it at the end of that, but it does give us five years. Okay. Now, have you guys discussed this with, with the uh, Forest Service? Because I know we have the I-90 corridor. We're working with them right now. And I don't know, you know, what funding we have to do the I-90 corridor work. Is it, are we looking at this to help do the I-90 corridor work, or is that a separate funding? So, to some, some, some of it. Um, right now, the funding we would have to pursue would be like a Western Fire Manager grant or a hazardous fuels type grant um, through tire. And then, um, right now, nobody really knows which direction this is going to go with the new administration that was just elected. It could, I mean, they could throw a lot of money at us, or they could just say, well, this is your money, when it's, you know, when it's spent, it's spent, and we're done. Um, it's just... Um, as far as funding that we already have, it's already tied to projects, but they're not necessarily tied to the I-90. Okay. You think it'd be good for us all to sit down with the Forest Service and talk about, you know, how we're going to fund this I-90 corridor and if it is indeed we need we need this uh, CWG grant. Is that what it's called? So we, CWDG. CWDG grant yep. mm -hmm. to help fund that. Then we can correlate with them to because I know that's a big going to be a big project. And I but I don't know if it's going to be ready in five years. I mean, is this grant when when was this grant due? When it when when would it be funded? The application period or told <laughs> they keep telling us the end of the month okay. uh, and that was in september and then october and here we are in november they keep telling us the end of the month is when the notice of applications um, are to be announced it's going to be open for 90 days so if they make it open for 90 days and they truly do open it at the end of november then we're looking at in theory early um, excuse me, late February, early March, depending on when they actually uh, create that open period for that 90 day window of application. And then once the applications are reviewed, that will likely happen in April or May as they roll up because they're reviewed at a national scale, not a regional. So they're reviewed at a regional scale and some filtering happens there and then they're reviewed again at a national scale and receive their rankings and their allocation um, possibilities at that national meeting and that will likely happen like i said sometime in april or may with the funding being available in mid june to mid july would be my guess of 25. Okay, now and then it'll be available for five years from the you know, the initial award notification. Okay, so with IDL, if, if we did partner with IDL, does that give us a better chance or does it give us the same chance to get this grant? You know, because obviously we're, we're uh, applying for a grant. So partnering with you, would, I mean, is, is, does that give us a better chance of getting the grant or is it... How does that work? It's difficult to say whether there's a better chance in that relationship. There hasn't been enough, frankly, enough data provided amongst the other states who are applicants in the process versus standalones. Um, 
because the program is so new, the states are acting as technical service providers to all of the applicants to try and help them be as successful as they possibly can. So IDL will still function in that way, even if you choose not to enter into a relationship with us, we will still function as a technical advisor to you all in developing those applications. Um, the nuances being, as I previously described, that the fiscal relationship then becomes with the Forest Service versus IDL. Okay. And then the auditing components uh, would be with you all instead of with IDL as well. Uh, and those audits would be from the Office of Management and Budget, so they would be federal, federal audits. audits yeah. yeah, from the OAG. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Bill, what is your thinking on it? Well, with knowing some of the people that uh, work with Tire, and I've met most of them and, and talked with them, and they've kind of helped me uh, through some projects. Um, it could be a real good thing. Um, like he says, you know, there's no guarantee that if we do partner with them, that we're going to get the grant. But, you know, out here where, where we're not partnered with anybody and just kind of doing it ourselves, um, I don't know if we're going to have a lesser chance or that's kind of where. Um, I kind of, I kind of lean towards going with the IDL, but then again, we'd probably want to look at it as a uh, as an auditing standpoint and as a management standpoint of the grant, and whether we have the, you know, it, we might want to run that by our court too. Right, right now, if we were to get this by ourselves. Uh -huh. I think that um, just the audits would drive us. I was kind of the other part of it as administrating the grant. You, you would only have two of us administrating: mm -hmm. Colleen and myself, where he's got a yeah. a full staff. Yeah. I, I will add if I can. Um, that every application that IDL has supported or drafted, whether that's Western State Fire Managers, Healthy Hazard Fields Reduction, Landscape Scale Restoration, FEMA grants, in the last three years, every single one of our submitted applications has been recommended and funded. So we have topped out in every single category, in every single funding source. In fact, most recently, we were the only state to put in a particular application through one of the FEMA processes, and we were the only state to be awarded. So we've got the bandwidth to take on applications and the necessary staff to look into all of the nuanced details to make sure that they meet the competitive standards of the process that they're being reviewed within. Okay. And, and one another quick question, because I know our clerk's going to ask this question, is, you know, the, the the money goes through you, or does it come through us? Through us. Okay, through you. So then there would be no, our clerk wouldn't be having mm. to um, issue checks and everything else. It wouldn't well, we, come through our clerk to work. Because she, you know, she's going to ask her about it an administrative be, yeah. expense. Would it would be a pass-through award, okay. similarly to how we're currently... Yeah. Yeah. In relationship with Western State Farm Manager, it basically far. the way it's set up is we basically stay the same as we are right now, where the money comes from the state. Um, we do the checks to the contractors, and, and uh, what other, whatever else we have expenses on. Okay, and then we would do a reimbursement, right? Yep. We could exercise, uh, which we have done with uh, another county, Boundary County specifically, mm -hmm. 
taken on specific aspects of work and handled the procurement through our processes, but that's done with the local administrator to make sure that it's meeting the program intents. We're just carrying the workload on the procurement side. So in some instances, we can do that on your behalf. It does uh, confine you though to the state procurement policies, mm -hmm. uh, right? Is that we have a, a very specific set of yep. structure um, guidelines that we have to be uh, within, and so we, whoever gets the job is who gets the job at the end of the day, right? And it's but it's following procurement, yeah, yeah, yeah. which so, we try to do here too, of course, yeah. I'm not saying that you don't. I'm just saying it's that it's another aspect it's just of the an, job. Yeah, it's just another aspect of the job, and we have um, done that in other places and successfully done yeah. it. It does change the workload of some of the local staff, so those who are over. Um, what's what is our office over here on the hill? Oh, uh, the Cataldo office. Yeah. yeah, the Cataldo staff would be involved at that point because. I can't be over here every day, but they can work with Bill because they're already over here. Right. I work with them all the time. Yeah, so. exactly. Okay. So it is an option that we can explore. Okay. If that's Grand Administrator, how about your two cents worth? Well, from what I've been looking at with this, I think we have the ability, and I, I'm with Bill, I think that um, it's a great opportunity, and some of the um, burdens that come along with this probably would be best suited to go with IDL. Um, I believe that it would be a fund we would have to set up like we do with every every pot of money that comes in. And so we have to keep an eye on that just to make sure that everything's separate reporting because it is reimbursement so we're going to have to follow all of those and have all the backup documentation. But we've got that set up and that's, that's not that way with it. A burden on us because Bill and I have talked a lot about this and what that looks like. And, you know, we've got some you know, rough draft of you know, kind of a skeleton put together, but I don't know if it's a, um, you know, a formal plan until we really get into what that application looks like. Um, but I think we have the ability, um, the auditing thing is something that is never a fun thing, especially directly from OMB, that's their you know, kind of big theaters, and so having two audits doesn't excite me, so I like the idea of going on and um, having IDL take on the audit burdens. Um, but I think we, we can work cooperatively with all the agencies that when I try this put together, I think it's an opportunity to definitely pursue and work on that. It would be the same if your relationship was with the Forest Service. It would be a reimbursement basis process. You'd have to have the same sort of tracking. The difference is, is the relationship is direct to the Forest Service instead of IDL being the buffer. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think I've heard... Colleen say we might be better off going through IDL. I think I've heard Bill say there's some advantages to that. Yeah. Um, the uh, inability to purchase equipment seems to be the one major downside. But we could get five years of use out of the equipment, mm -hmm. which if they do a good job, they'll wear it all out anyway. Well, the other thing is, is with the five years, um, Maybe we can find another avenue to purchase this equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. And where we're not. Yeah, I'd like to have a nice shiny play toy sitting out there so we can go tear stuff up, but I mean. Yeah, we need the work done. Yeah. yeah. We need the grant, really, for our. To, with fire mitigation, especially if this I 90 corridor. If it happened to go out about the same time, I know it's a five year, they're not even into scoping yet, I think, you know, so mm -hmm. I don't know how, so it may not even match up with the corridor, but. Why, uh. But I guess you could, yeah, you could be doing properties. Yes, I could. Um, I've, I've seen the map on, on what they've got planned, mm -hmm. and I've talked with uh, the, their local fuels person um, who's putting the plan together and uh, 
Yeah, it's going to take a while because going through the, the NEPA process, with, with the, especially with the feds, it seems to drag out and drag out and drag out. And, and so. But we don't have to do that for the NEPA process for, for no. private property, so no. we could be working on those yeah, we, private properties that are within that boundary to really kind of get a jump on things. We would get with um, the Forest Service and identify the pieces we're going to do. And it would probably be next, uh, probably share a property line with the project they're going to do. Yeah. Okay. So the reality is a lot of those are already identified in the CWPP, which you all just executed. Mm -hmm. Right? So a lot of that initial engagement has already happened. It's just a matter of where's the money to make it work. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'd be inclined to say we go through IDM. Uh, I I would uh, yeah I would I would also agree on that especially yeah. with what we have coming up with the the project at the end. Do you need a formal vote on that? I don't know. It's That's it. Whatever your process is, that you need to do. do it. Okay. Make the motion. Yeah, I'll motion to uh, partner with IDL on the CWDG grant. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're officially saying we want to partner with you. Excellent. Okay. okay. My grant writer, just as a heads up for you all, has already started on your application, and it wasn't process-wise for us. It didn't matter if it was going to be with us or with you. Uh, the, the application is in the process of being developed. So, if you had decided to go on your own, we would have still continued to work with Bill make whatever changes needed for you all, but we're in the process of, because we want to be ahead of the game, not uh, reactive. So we're just waiting for the new instructions to come out to make sure that we haven't missed anything. But we should have an application for you to look at sometime in the next two weeks. Okay. Is that as well? Mm -hmm. So if she calls, I should answer the phone, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and there's some other future funding opportunities that we'll look out for your equipment. I'm actually meeting with the Idaho Office of Emergency Management on Wednesday this week to talk about the brick grants and whether or not we can use those brick grants to buy equipment and, or through declarations of disasters, which happen from time to time in the county. Mm -hmm. If not, uh, through that PDM grant, the Pre-Disaster Mitigation Grant, which is associated with those if we can't buy that equipment on those grants either. So I will have an answer back to Bill before the end of the week on those potential opportunities there. I appreciate that. Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah. I've got a little time here. Uh, quick public comment. So there's no match on this, of course. And the 150000 doesn't come out of the grant. It comes out of the county coffers. Am I right? No, it comes out of the grant. It does come out of the grant. Okay. That's my biggest question. Yeah. Yep, the match, uh, because the county... Under the CGES tool is designated as an underserved uh, population center um, or groups. The match waiver will be sought associated with that application, so it'll be zero match. We always encourage landowners, of course, to participate because mm -hmm. if they do, then they're more likely to maintain the work. That's than right. They're best right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, we've got to start another meeting in one minute, so I'm going to adjourn this one. Okay.